Okay, so let's talk numbers in SQL Server 2012 now. We talked about strings in the last video. I want to talk about the numerics in this one. The next video will do dates and times and other data types. Okay. okay, so let's break it down to two different categories. You have exact numerics that you're going to focus on. And what we mean by exact numerics is you are returned the actual number that's stored in the database. Uh, if you provide the database with a number, 19, for example, you will get 19 in return. Okay? You're not going to get 19.000001. You're going to get 19 coming back. They are exact representations of the number. You see what's actually stored in the database. Okay? And you're probably used to working with these in other systems, integers, decimals, currency type uh, of data. Right? Um, and I think you'll find that this is the most common type. Um, in fact, you may never use approximate numerics. Uh, approximate numerics are for storing floating point numbers. Okay? So you may not actually get into a, a situation where you have to work with floating point. And what can actually happen, the reason it's called approximate numerics, is that sometimes the value stored in the database is different from what is presented to you. It might be a little bit rounded, just a little bit. Maybe at the 38th decimal point, it's rounded up. Okay? Right, so we're dealing with float and real data types here. And I did put a Wikipedia link in here for uh, floating point. I know that not everybody's gone to computer science class, or maybe it's been <laughs> a few years <laughs> since you uh, started looking at all that kind of stuff, right? So pull up the PDF for this video and, you know, or just browse to the link yourself there. Uh, I think it's important that you have a, a good solid knowledge of the different data types here. Um, this ensures that you will be able to store the correct number of decimal places, that you'll be able to store the correct number of digits, the correct number sent back to you is what you thought it would be. Um, and you also want to make sure that you're not wasting space. Like you wouldn't want to choose an 8-bit type for a 100 million row column, uh, a table, uh, when a 1-byte type would do, right? That would just result in a lot of extra wasted space. Okay, so this is somewhat of a performance tuning slash optimization slash just good practice. Okay? Now, let's just kind of walk through the integer-based numerics. Okay? Integer meaning that there is no decimal place. Okay? Now, we have in SQL Server what's called the bit data type, and the bit data type has only two states, two values. It is 0 or 1. Right? This is what we use for Boolean values, true, false, yes, no, okay? is enabled, is not enabled, that sort of thing is perfect for the bit data type. Okay? The bit data type takes up one bit of storage. Okay? So uh, you know, use that whenever you have your true, false, yes, no, Boolean style. Okay? I like the, uh, what would you call it? The, I mean, it's, it, it's made it so that you have two domain of values. You have a zero or a one. You can't choose two. It's not a three-state logic column. Okay? The tiny int data type, zero to 255. Okay. Now, this takes up one byte of storage. Uh, notice that it's not negative 127 to positive 128 here. Okay. This is an unsigned integer. Okay. So if you're familiar with the concept of signed integers and unsigned integers, unsigned integers are the positive only values here. So this would actually be the uh, only, I guess, bit and tiny int you could say <laughs> are unsigned integers. Uh, notice it's one byte, 0 to 255. Okay. Uh, now, the small int, I hate that syntax, and I'm sorry. Copy, paste straight out of books online. That's the way they did it. So I'm sorry. I just, you need to see it. What you should focus on here, instead of the 2 to the 15th, is there is your range. Your range is negative 32,768, meaning that is the smallest value you can place in that column to positive 32,767, meaning that's the largest value that you could put in there, okay? Now, this is what is called a signed integer, okay? Notice that we do have the negative symbol right there. This is a signed integer, okay? In some systems that you're uh, used to working in, you would have a, a range of 0 to 65,000, what, 535, 536, something like that. I can't remember, Okay. Because that would be an unsigned integer version. Okay, we don't have that in SQL Server. Okay, 
Okay, we do not have the small int and the int and the big N. These are all going to be signed integers. Okay. All right. So two bytes of storage. The int is just doubling. Notice it's just going from one byte to two byte to four bytes. Uh, focus really on the negative two billion to positive two billion range. Okay. Remember that. Big int. Now, <laughs> this is a big one. Uh, I actually had to look this up. Uh, let's see. So you have the hundred thousands, a million, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion. Okay, so negative nine quintillion to positive nine quintillion. That's a pretty big range of numbers right there, right? Um, okay, so you got that. It takes up eight bytes, you notice here. Um, well, let's go through just a couple of scenarios and talk about the proper choice of our data types here. Let's say we're asked to store employee, employee badge numbers for a really small company, a company that has 16 employees today, and it's a mom and pop shop and they never expect to have really that many more. And so they are telling us they want to store ranges zero to 100 in their badge range. All right. You can question their logic all, the, all you want, but they're the boss and this is what they've said. So we want to store badge numbers that are in the zero to 100 range. Okay. So what data type do you think we should choose? Bit, tiny int, small int, int, or big int? Well, the most efficient way to do this would be tiny int. This gives us the 0 to 255 range. Okay, so we're perfect right there. And we're down at one byte per row. Okay, That's the most efficient way. Would it have been wrong, though, to store it as an int or a big int? Not necessarily wrong, but let's just look at the effects of changing that data type, right? Let's take a 100 million row table, which is way beyond our little mom and pop 16 employee shop. But let's just take a 100 million row table, okay? And let's say that we had sized that row at tiny ant. Well, we're going to get 95 megabytes of storage. So keep a look on as we go down the, this right-hand side where I have it underlined. If instead of tiny int, we make it a small int, well, we double it to about 190, okay? So we've doubled our storage, which is still not that big of a deal, right? 190 megs, uh, 100 million row table. I mean, you're not freaking out over that. You probably have bigger issues to deal with with a 100 million row table. Uh, well, when we get to an int, we've gone from 95 megabytes to 381. I mean, not that big of a deal. I mean, it's a lot more uh, sure. Uh, it's four times as much. Uh, but if we had actually chosen the big int, now we're at eight times the storage. So we're having to store 763 megabytes of data where we really could have stored 95. And let me just say here, and this is maybe a hard problem to, to understand, or, or maybe my example will be kind of fall on fall flat for some people, but here's what I've found. Um, if somebody makes one design decision that's a pretty poor design decision, like choosing big int instead of tiny int, that's probably not the only one they made. There are probably 50 other columns throughout the database or this table even that are improperly sized data types. Okay, So you get a really large table with poorly done data types all, all throughout. You just are in for a world of hurt. You just have to throw hardware at it, right? Um, you're just going to have to buy faster disks, more memory, um, or spend a huge chunk of time and money re-engineering it, right? Uh, okay, let's do another one. Um, what if I wanted to store the population by country by year? Hmm. So we need to store populations, okay? So what are we looking for here? Uh, tiny int, clearly that's out, 0 to 255. Small int, int, or big int. All right, you know, I think the big int makes the most sense in a situation like this. Clearly, we're dealing with big numbers, right? I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 billion people on the earth as I record this. Um, so, wow, <laughs> that's a lot, right? And so I can, say, I can understand the case, why don't we use int? If you recall, the integer type is four bytes of storage, and you can have plus or minus two billion. As far as I know, we don't have any countries on the planet today that have 2 billion uh, in them. But, and remember, just a, a reminder here, we can't make that 
plus four billion. We can't just make that a uh, an unsigned integer, right? To make it go zero to four billion, it's plus or minus two billion, and that's not changeable. Okay, some people always ask that here, but here's the answer, or the question we can't answer: Will a country ever contain more than two billion citizens? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. And given that we're just talking going from four bytes to eight bytes for the big end, I, I just that's just not enough. I'd just go with the big end and then I'd never have to second guess myself in terms of, are we ever going to have to re-architect this design? Like some of your design process has to include the concept of future proofing so that you don't have to come back and re-engineer or re-architect. I'd, I'd much rather throw hardware at something in, you know, a, a very short term way than having to spend months and years re-architecting a system. Okay. So let's, all right, that's enough of that. All right, let's go kind of shift focus here. Okay. Let's talk decimal points. Okay? Um, there's several ways to store your numbers that have decimal points. When you're dealing with that, you're concerned with the what's called the scale. Okay? The scale is the maximum numbers to the right of the decimal point. Okay? And then you have the concept of precision, which is the total number of digits, both to the left and to the right of the decimal point. Okay. Uh, just to make, let you know, the precision does not actually count the decimal point itself. Okay. All right. So uh, let's talk about two different data types. Excuse me. Uh, decimal and numeric. Okay. You see where it says up there that they are equal. Here's what I mean. Let's take this, data, this decimal data type up here. We have defined it with a four precision and a two scale. Okay, so four precision and two scale. The four precision says that we can have four total digits. The scale says of those four total digits, two of them are to the right of the decimal place. So you see my little plus minus symbol right there. That means we can go plus or minus all the way up. Okay, uh, that stores up to five bytes. And if we tried to enter 100, we would get an arithmetic overflow error. Okay? It would not allow us to put that or update that row, okay? Because we're going outside the precision, okay? We'd have to now have five because that would actually equal 100.00, okay? When you put that scale of two, it has to have two decimal places, okay? So 100 would actually fail. We would get an error message, okay? Now, when we look at the numeric, okay, numeric is a data type, means the exact same thing as decimal. Which one should you use? I don't care. I think most people will use the decimal data type. So I think for convention's sake in, you know, uh, in modern world, I would use the decimal. But you're not going to mess up by using numeric. Okay? Now, when we change the scale to 10, okay, that doesn't tell us you can use 10 digits to the left or to the right. No, 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 no. We have to have the scale still to know. Okay, so we just say 10 minus 2 equals 8, so I can have 8 digits to the left over here. Okay, so now I'm plus minus whatever big number that is. I don't even know. We'll see. One, 99 million. <laughs> right? I, think, I can't do it visually there. Um, you can see that the storage balloons up to 9 bytes. And then if we throw in numeric, that's fine too. It's the exact same thing, right? They're just synonyms. You can use either one. Um, at the bottom, if I want to, I can specify a zero scale. And this is actually helpful. Sometimes you will get into situations where you have to generate uh, values or you have to work with values and say, I need to use a five-digit number. Okay? I, I don't need uh, to use uh, decimal places, and I don't need um, you know, to go beyond 9,999. So you, you couldn't really use this small int because you'd be allowed to go above 9,999 with the small n. So you could use this 5, comma 0 as a way of doing it. Okay? And it takes up 5 bytes. Um, you know, we all have to store currency in our databases. So let's talk about using money and currency uh, here. We have two data types, small money and money. And they have a fixed precision and scale. So what you end up having to do is just kind of memorize uh, what their ranges are. So you see down here, you have your small money, which is negative 214,000 to positive 214,000. And that has four bytes of storage. And then we're at uh, let's see, millions, billion, nine trillion, <laughs> uh, plus or minus nine trillion here uh, for the eight bytes. Now, here's the thing. A lot of 
people prefer to use decimal. Okay. Um, if you choose money or small money, notice that fixed scale of four. Okay. Um, you can't change it. So if you have a, a database that depends on two digit monetary values, two decimal rather monetary values, don't use the money in small money data type unless you're going to round everything. Okay. So like if you sell everything, everything in your store sells for some dollars and 95 cents, which is a very common ending and 95 cents or 99 cents, right? Then don't use money in small money. You're going to need to find an alternative way. How about choosing a, you know, decimal 19 comma two. Okay. So you can store or, you know, whatever. I don't know what your precision would need to be in your situation, but um, the comma two would force it so that you could never store more than two decimal places and you'd never be encountering strange rounding or truncating errors uh, because of using money. Okay. You don't want somebody being able to say, um, you know, to put in your, your 199501, but that's exactly what they could do with both money and small money. So a lot of developers, myself included, prefer to use decimal instead of the fixed precision uh, and scale of money. Okay. Uh, lastly, the floating point numbers. You know, you do get into situations where a number can't be fully expressed. Uh, pi. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what the largest slash latest count is. Um, I think I read that one website has calculated pi to a hundred million digits so far, and they're still continuing to go. Um, so you know, this would fall under the approximate numerics. When SQL Server, if you were to store pi in a float or a real data type, what it sends back to you is not the actual value of pi. Now, pi is not technically a floating point number. It's really more the ir irrational number. Uh, but the, the, the point is that what is displayed to you by SQL Server is simply a representation of that number. It's not the exact number itself. It's an approximate. Okay? Um, you don't really find most people using float and real. Okay? Um, they don't have precision and scale. Um, it's just going to be pretty rare to uh, need to use float and real, I think, for most people. Uh, out there. If you don't know what floating point is, chances are you're probably not working with it. Okay? Uh, a couple of examples here that I wanted to highlight. Notice that the keys you see here, the primary keys and foreign keys, we'll talk about those in a few videos from now actually here. Notice that they're all small. Integer, four bytes, integer, four bytes, integer, four bytes, integer, four bytes. They have really narrow keys. Okay, You don't want one megabyte keys. And we'll talk about why a little bit later. Notice the numeric down here. We have a 38 precision with a six scale. I notice the unit price and the unit price discount are both money data types. Okay? Uh, if we take a look at the currency rate table over here, um, notice here our keys are, again, small. We have an integer, which is four bytes, an in car. How many bytes does that take? I hope I didn't trick you into thinking three, right? <laughs> Remember that that's a Unicode type, and so it is a fixed type, meaning that you know we chose in car, uh, in char. So it takes up, you know, you can only store three characters in it, but it takes up six bytes when you do. Okay, so six bytes and six bytes, and then we have money and money for the rates. Okay, thought I would just share those with you. I tell you what, let's come back in the next video. Let's talk about date, time, date, time, uh, XML, SQL variant, and some other fun things.